All right, hello everyone. We'll give it a second to let people get on. It's right at 12. Okay. First, I want to introduce myself. I am Jordan Hammersley. I am an instructor at Southeastern Illinois College located in Harrisburg, Illinois. I teach the Outfitter Wildlife Management Program. This will be brand new starting this fall, this August of 2020. It's not a agricultural program per se, but we have a lot of interest from FFA members and um, students that tend to live a more rural lifestyle. So we're gonna do a full run through of that. First, I wanted to thank Miss Casey Bolin and Miss Megan McCoy for this opportunity. This has been great. These ladies have been extremely helpful in getting this going for me. Um, this is my first time doing a Facebook Live event, so bear with me here. A <laughs> um, little bit about my background. I have a degree in biological science and also a degree in zoology with an emphasis on wildlife biology. I worked as a wildlife biologist for many years. I'm also a professional outfitter and hunting guide and an adventure guide. And now I am teaching the next generation how to go about becoming either a guide, a game warden, or a wildlife biologist. So my program and curriculum, I've listed the, the classes over here on the right of your screen. Um, you can you'll be able to uh, see that. I've also listed my phone number and my email. Um, I'm available to work from home on Saturday and Sunday as well, but you you would need my personal cell. If that's those are the only days that you can talk, please um, send me an email and I'll give out my personal cell. I didn't want to post it on here, but my office phone and extension is listed here. So um, all right, we've got a question. What does an outfitter do and what kinds of students would do best in this program? All right, outfitting is, in my business, is getting people ready to go on hunts or adventures. So I started off doing simple white-tailed deer and turkey hunts right here in Southern Illinois. As I began to grow and I branched out into the Western states for elk, mule deer, we did some black bear. Um, a little bit of bighorn sheep, antelope. Um, speaking of black bears, check this out. This is the skull of the American black bear. Here, I don't have the best light. I am broadcasting from a cabin in the Shawnee National Forest. But cool things like this in class that we get to talk about. So when we do learn about bears, um, we can actually study the dentition here and the different proportions of the skull. So um, Outfitting guides also do, there's outfitters for everything. If you like to kayak and canoe, fishing is huge here because of our proximity to Kentucky Lake. Um, anything adventurous. So my company even did some mountaineering. I had clients that were wanting to climb large mountains, so we branched out and did that. So really just about anything that you can imagine for getting a member of the general public that's unexperienced out onto these adventures. So I think, I believe I was successful because I had the wildlife management and biology background. I worked as a biologist for a number of years um, from endangered species to game species to exotics in Africa. I was a big part of the Rhino Art Project in Kenya. So I, I'm bringing a lot of experience to the table here. So as far as what kind of students do best in this program, generally people that like being in the outdoors. I've got a three-pronged attack to that way I, I can umbrella all of my students together. I've got a mixture of students that want to become game wardens, students that want to actually be an outfitter and a hunting and adventure guide, and then I've got some students that are going to go on to university after and become wildlife biologist. And so my, my curriculum attacks all three of those. We cover laws and regulations. Uh, that's very important when it comes to wildlife. We cover 
the actual wildlife biology and ecology behind these animals. So in the hunting education, yes, we talk about hunting, but there's an emphasis on the taxonomy. How are these animals related? Their habitat zones, their breeding and reproduction levels, mortality rates, things that begin to touch on what a senior in college in a 400 level wildlife ecology class We'll have to know. So we begin to touch on these topics to get these students ready for these difficult concepts. As of right now, a lot of a lot of the interest is coming from these kids that they've grown up hunting. These boys and girls have grown up. They've been hunting for 10 or 12 years with mom and dad. They like to go out and camp. They like to fish. They like to be in the great outdoors. So that's that's the target student. And hence, that's why the F it's popular with FFA members. So um, this is a great opportunity to reach members in the Illinois Association. So, um, all right, Casey asked, what job opportunities are in Illinois for your degree offering? So this is a growing field. It used to be hunting and fishing used to be kind of a boys club, but it's very far from that. About Four billion dollars were spent last year just on equipment, uh, ladies' equipment. So climbing harnesses, bows that are tapered to a smaller adult, things like that. That's a growing market. So outfitters have popped up all over Southern Illinois. I blame a lot of that on the fact that the Ohio River runs down the, the eastern part of Illinois and the Mississippi River down the west. And all those bottoms are great hunting grounds for large whitetails, large tom turkeys, um, great morel hunting grounds, things like that. And there's a market for that. I started off right here in, in Illinois guiding hunts, and two clients turned into four, turned into eight, turned into 16 to 32. It was always, hey, um, Jordan was great. Next year, I want to bring my brother or my brother-in-law or my grandpa it, it spreads. So there's a lot of job opportunities in this. And it's not just hunting. There's a lot of conservation type jobs that this generation that's coming out of high school right now, conservation is going to be a big topic throughout your lives. So with a wildlife management background, that doesn't mean you're going to hunt or even harm animals at all. That just means you might end up working as a surveyor on a pipeline doing a biological survey, which we also learn about in this program. So they're, they're everywhere. I know that my own company right now is hiring a guide. We're going through some interview processes right now. Um, a main guide is we'll be taking maternity leave. So to fill that gap, we're going to be hiring. So that's just my personal experience. And I know a few others in Colorado as well. But basically all over the country, there's these conservation type jobs, wildlife, outdoor type jobs popping up. So think of resorts that have fishing and hunting opportunities. Um, right here, Giant City Lodge is a great, uh, that's about an hour away from campus. But it, it's a, they they have job postings quite often and just other other large parks. It's, it's hard to beat a job when you're like me growing up, all I wanted to do was be outdoors. And so I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine having been 22 and just working in a bank, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it wouldn't have been great for me. I needed to be outside. So there's a lot of jobs just in the park systems. Working at a, a large um, nature preserve, there's one not, not far south of here at uh, Lane Between the Lakes. That is a great place to work. Um, obviously, a lot of biologists and outdoor enthusiasts covet the jobs at Yellowstone National Park. Those are kind of hard to get. You've got to have a lot of experience, but that is the goal of a lot of people to work their way up to work at either Yosemite or Yellowstone. So that's great. So, all right, let's look at some more of these questions. Are there many jobs in conservation? Yes, we've talked about that. Um, if a student does not want to work with hunters. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. I see a lot of jobs, uh, conservation type jobs posted in the north for doing just the surveys on some of the gas and oil pipelines that come through. Um, I myself did a little bit of that. Let me explain what a biological survey is. That's where a person goes in and basically lists every species in that area. So you start off with your understory of plants, then you go up to your brush, then your canopy. Then you begin to work on animals. So pick, let's pick um, 
reptiles. You start cataloging what species live in that area, what will be aff affected if we build this pipeline, if we build a wind farm, if we construct a road or a highway. Um, those are always fun because you can switch, goes from, um, I always started with mammals, um, you live trap them, see what's in the area, and then birds, and then um, reptiles, and, and everything that might be affected. So those are just great opportunities to run around in the woods, and you're basically cataloging animals. But it, it gets more complicated than that, because you have to then write a report on how this road, wind farm, pipeline will affect this habitat, the eco zone, the eco clines, eco tones. So there's, it gets to be a lot of science in it. But boy, is it fun to run around and get paid to just walk through the woods and catalog and get to uh, be paid for hiking and and running around in the forest. Can a student from another part of the state enroll in your program? Yes, I've got students from all over the country looking at this program. It's um, that's because this is a very unique program. There's really nothing like it in the entire country. We are very fortunate right here at Southeastern to have this. So I've got a student moving up from Tennessee. I've got one um, looking to come maybe from Nebraska, but this is the first year, so that's going to spread. There's gonna end up being a lot of Texas students, I believe, because of just the sheer amount of outfitting and outdoor type jobs. And Texas is a huge state. There's a lot of, lot of students, including FFA members in Texas. So I expect a lot to come from the South. Um, so yes, if you're interested in enrolling, this is Luke. Um, send me an email. It's listed. It's, it's my first name, dot last name at SIC.edu. You can see it on the right. Send me an email and I'll, I'll send you all the information you want. Ask as many questions as you want. Um, where can a, Luke's also asking, where can the student find more information? All right, yeah, that's the webpage, SIC.edu. And then I put the, also over here in my descriptions, I put the Facebook page for the wildlife program and also the Facebook page for our trap shooting team of which I am the head coach. And I know a lot of FFA members do shoot trap. That's actually how I got started shooting trap myself was an FFA program. I was young, I wasn't in high school yet, but it was a local FFA program that were taking their students to a gun range in Evansville, Indiana. And fortunately, my father let me tag along some, and, and that's how I got started. So Luke's asking, can you help students find internships? Yes, that's actually a big part of the, the second year of the program is we want to send our students to internships all over the country. We also are investigating the possibilities of externships, which would be the student um, instead of going for a month, two months, three months, a semester, a summer, an externship would be, I send you with, if you're thinking about being a game warden, I would send you with a game warden of say, Saline County for a day or two, you ride around with him and see what he does. And then maybe down in Pope County that has a more forestry type job, maybe send you with them, maybe uh, send you with a DNR biologist for a day. So you get multiple experiences. That's kind of in the, in the planning stages right now, but yes, we definitely help. I'm also investigating the possibility that over the summers, if you don't want to travel for an internship, that I might be able to set up one with, with myself personally. Um, that way we could cover a little bit of forestry, some freshwater fishing, some hiking, um, different adventurous things that we could do. So yes, a big part of my job is helping students find these internships, find these jobs. I want to help. I am um, extremely involved in this program. I'm the instructor for the courses. I re go out and recruit for this all the time. I talk about it. And so I'm very hands-on. And my students right now that are committed moving, um, I could vouch for them to say that I've been very helpful. When they're looking for apartments, when they're looking for, um, hey, we're gonna move down to go to your school, but we would like to bow hunt on the weekends during the fall, can you help us? Yes. I absolutely can. I try to be completely hands-on to help with anything my students need. So um, let me answer this real quick. There's also, we also have some other academic programs that tend to be popular with FFA members and people that grew up on farms. 
We have diesel technology, which is a great program here. It's very popular. There are several branches of that to medium equipment, to heavy machinery. Um, we have a welding program that's pretty popular. The thing about farming is you've got to have big diesel equipment. And I know a thing or two about farming and farmers are rough on their machines. And so these mechanic jobs are booming. They're booming right now. It's a great program. Um, we've also got a brand new program called Power Sports. This is for students that want to learn how to work on the smaller engines. Think of the things that we call toys, your side-by-sides, dirt bikes, ATVs, jet skis, things like that. That's a program specific to that. And it's kind of paired with Polaris. So students get certified to work for Polaris and on their items. And so that's a very unique, there's very few programs like that in the entire country as well. We're very fortunate to have some of these. So um, what is your, what is my best life advice for students? Okay, I was going to get to that later, but I can answer that now. My biggest life advice is do what you love. I tried to do multiple things in college. I changed my mind a few times and there's nothing wrong with that, but somehow I always found myself migrating back to wildlife. Um, yes, I do some hunting, but I'm an extremely ethical hunter, but my passion really is the conservation of these animals, um, the ethical conservation of these animals. So once you pick a career, you got to remember you're going to do it for 30 years. So it better be something that you like or you'll be miserable. So um, whatever that your passion is, choose that. If you like to do mathematics all day, every day, if ma mathematical equations just float your boat and that's what you love, then you better go get a degree in calculus. Um, if you just love numbers and an organization, then you might want to consider accounting. But if you love the great outdoors and you love to hunt and fish and hike and bike and kayak and camp, then maybe this, my program is for you. But look, I would advise each student to look, look hard, look deep, do a lot of thinking on what you want to do. The best thing about college, irregardless of what college you pick in all 50 states, your first year, and your second year are going to include a certain amount of general education anyway. So don't stress over this summer and think, oh, I have to pick a major. Yes, that's good if you do, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. You've got time. Um, everybody's got to have English, math, and speech classes, and everybody's got to have a, a checklist of other certain what's called humanities and other general core education. So get those out of the way and just do some life thinking. Um, I want to talk about the, the some of the clubs and teams on campus. I get asked that a lot. Um, first, we've got a trap shooting team I spoke about. So if anybody's um, enjoy shooting trap and skeet, things like that, we have scholarship opportunities for this. It's it's amazing. I'm a, always amazed at the amount of people that are shocked to find out, oh, wow, SIC has uh, scholarships for trap shooting. Um, we're fortunate. I was the kind of student, I've never played a basketball game. I've never thrown or hit a baseball. I've never shot a basketball. I might've shot a basketball, but I've certainly never played a game of basketball. Um, but I was into the outdoor sports. I was a awfully good trap shooter and an archer. Um, that's that's my kind of sport. So I'm so glad to announce that we do have scholarships. So if anybody's still looking, um, we've got some spots available on our team starting this fall. So send me an email. We've also got an archery team, which is um, kind of a fascination for a college to have. That's that's kind of a rarity um, to have both an archery and a trap shooting team. So if there's archers out there, there's scholarships for that, and I know that they're recruiting, so send me an email, and I can forward that to the head coach as well of that team, and in general, I can forward your emails. If you've got a question about diesel tech, send it to send it to my email, and I will mail it out to the diesel tech instructors. I know them very well. I uh, My office is in their building above some of their shops, actually, and so I see them um, on the regular. 
So by all means, send your emails to me and I will forward them out today. I, I work from home every day right now, including checking my mail on Saturday and Sunday. So your uh, response will be timely, put it that way. Um, scholarship opportunities other than for the teams. We have a whole list of scholarships and sometimes a few of them don't, don't get any applicants. So if you would have been the one that applied to that, and you were the only candidate for it, well, guess what? So just look on our webpage. There's a ton of scholarship opportunities. Um, I, I, here's another question I get asked a lot. What are our class sizes like? Well, the best part of SIC is they're really not going to be any more than about 22 students. We try to keep our instructor to student ratio very low. The benefit of this is you get that one on one time. So, for an example, I myself went to Southeastern Illinois College, so I can personally vouch for this. When I took calculus, it was a struggle for me. I didn't like it, but the instructor was there to work with me one on one. So he would walk around the room to the to the uh, at the time was chalkboards and help each individual students with the equations. Now, when I started at um, Southern Illinois University in Carbondale, I had a class. It was an American history class, and it was in um, a very large lecture hall. There was probably five or 600 students there. Um, had that been a calculus class, I would have I would have failed. So I always recommend students picking if you're, um, you know, struggle with certain topics then a smaller school is always best. And SIC is so great. Our instructors care so much about the students. They really do. And if you ask anybody that went through, they're going to tell you that. That's not just me um, trying to push for my um, institution. That is me being truthful. So my personal classes in this program will um, right now are probably about 10. And so this is a hands-on program. I want to walk you through the classes before we leave here. I know I'm kind of uh, been going for about 20 minutes here, but um, I will get to my classes. I want to talk about uh, my favorite thing about campus. We are right at the edge of the Shawnee National Forest. So our campus is on a big hill and then directly to the south of us every day. When, I'm, when I get to work, I can see the Shawnee National Forest that I grew up running around in, hiking and hunting. And that's great. So this provides our students with great opportunities to fish, camp, hike, pick mushrooms, hunt, um, kayak and canoe. That's a kayaking is a um, a growing field around here. I see a lot of kayaks every day. If I look out the window when I'm driving down the road, I'd say, especially right now that the weather is nice, I, I would say that one out of 10 trucks has a kayak either in the bed or on the top. So that's a growing thing. And there's tons of lakes around here. So that's my favorite thing about campus. Um, it makes us kind of unique. Not very many campuses are right on the edge of such a big national forest with so much outdoor activity for the students. Makes us very unique. We're we're very fortunate to to have some of these programs that I'm, t that I'm talking about. So um, let me give a rundown of my courses. I listed them over here in my description, but I want to talk about them. That way students get the full grasp of how hands-on this is. It's hard to teach wildlife management, wildlife biology in the classroom. So um, that first semester, hunting education. We'll cover all the safe measures of hunting and then we start breaking down and talking about individual species so um, we'll talk about the badger its habitat its um, reproduction its diet and then we'll move on to say white-tailed deer we'll talk about its um, ecological history throughout the semester so students will get a hands-on then we have to go out and actually watch some of these animals set up some cameras watch some of their behaviors um, guiding in outdoors that's a class that's a client relations class. So I actually make all my students. Um, we'll get some real live clients and we'll go out and take them on adventures. Um, some of which will be simulated adventures and I'll throw some glitches in that system that you'll have to spot. 
as in, okay, this person wants to go on a kayaking trip. Well, maybe I'll tell them, um, don't, don't put on your life jacket. Wait for the student to um, notice that you're not wearing it before you ever try to put the, the craft in the water. Things like that. Um, firearm safety, we've got a gun range on campus. So we'll start off with dummy guns and then we'll move into actually going to the range and students will have the opportunity to fire live, live ammunition. Bow hunting safety is um, the the key there is the stands, setting up elevated stands. And we can't do that in the classroom. We're going to have to go out. We've got a management area right behind our campus. It's about a three minute walk from my office. And we'll actually go up and put up some stands, climb up in them, learn how to use climbing harnesses, learn how to shoot a crossbow. Um, we've got an indoor archery range right there. We'd have to walk by it to get to the wildlife management area. So that's that's great opportunity. So even if you're not part of the archery team or you're not part of this program, um, if you like to just shoot a bow, then we've, we've got a facility for that. So habitat and food plot installation, that is an agricultural class. That's where we have to learn how to use the machines to plant different habitats and food that wildlife need to survive and breed. Um, freshwater fishing, that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, learning about the ponds and rivers and lakes and the animals that live in them. And then we'll actually get to do some fishing and get to clean some fish. And um, I, I, was, I always say this because it's exciting. If we're going to have to clean fish, then we're having a fish fry in lab. It won't be in the lab, but it'll be out, outside, but it will be part of the lab. We might as well just have a fish fry. Big game management. That's where we learn about um, your moose, elk, brown bear, stuff like that, and the habitats that they live in, which is not Illinois. Waterfowl management. That's where we learn about um, the flyways and uh, the migratory birds that live in them. Upland game birds, that's your turkeys, quail, pheasant, birds like that. I hope to take my students on a few of these hunts when season opens. We'll go out and try to harvest some quail and maybe uh, maybe some pheasants. Range management is more of an ecosystem class. That's where we learn about um, the ecosystem as a whole, the animals that live on it, the things that they eat. Um, here, while I'm sitting right here, look at this. This is a pelt of a bobcat. So in my classes, um, when we're learning about the, the bobcat, when I ask you uh, for our exam, it's going to have a lab practical feel. So this might be laying on one of our lab tables with a note that says, what is, the, what is this species? You'll have to recognize that, okay, this is a member of family Felidae. Um, it's got small ears, so it must not be a lynx. It is a eastern bobcat, so it's scientific name Lynx rufus. So that's kind of cool. Um, what's this? Somebody's bound to have seen these. Look at this thing's tail. Here's what gives it away. It's a red fox, vulpes, vulpes. And so there's a lot of hands-on stuff that students will get to. Uh, here's an otter, river otter. And so we and we've got skulls and um, here's one that you normally don't see unless you live in northern Illinois, you see these. But down here, you don't. This is the gray fox. The smaller cousin of the red fox. So we've got some cool stuff. There's also all kinds of minks here beside me. Got a raccoon, a possum. Um, these are all tools I use to teach in the. Um, the classes to give it a hands on feel, so. We'll also be in hunting ed, talk about these, like the the red fox. Yes, Luke, that is a two different species of fox. The, the red here, red fox. These are professionally tanned, so they don't they don't stink or anything. Um, and then the the gray fox, their cousins. So we'll get to see these right here on campus. I want my students to go out. We'll go out and set up a predator call, which sounds like a bunny rabbit. And we'll put some students in a hunting blind and, and have them call in some coyotes and foxes during the day. And then we'll set up a game cam and I'll go out at night and call a little bit. And we'll get to see some of these animals come in and their predatory type behavior. So, um, oh, <laughs> 
hello Eliza that's my niece that's on here apparently so hey um okay is there any other questions from anybody what else can I I think I've basically covered about everything so if anybody's interested if you like to be outdoors and you like to hunt and fish then contact me please this is a great program we're very excited to have such a thing let me make sure that there's no other questions i'm missing um is there oh is there an age limit no absolutely not now most of my students are going to be um right out of high school but no we expect um, we expect to have some students that are in their 30s and 40s. We had a coal mine closure here not very far from campus. There's been a little bit of an interest of guys that are coming back to school. There's some federal money that's opened up to um, help pay for some of their schooling. So, yeah, there's no age age limit um, whatsoever. So, um, now, Luke, you're asking a lot of questions. You seem like you're interested. So make sure that you send me an email. And then I can send you updates and news and I can send you um, much more detailed um, information about the, the curriculum in these classes about all my lectures are already written. And so I have a great idea of exactly how each class is going to go and what we're going to be talking about. So any questions whatsoever. Um, all right, I think I'll leave it to you. Thank you so much, Casey. Thank you so much, Megan. Um, Illinois Association FFA members, thank you so much for having me. I kind of uh, ranted on a little bit for about 30 something minutes here. So hope everybody bared with me. Um, I look forward to getting some emails. I'm going to go check my emails right now. I hope I have some. So all right, everyone have a great day. Everybody stay safe. I know these are unusual times and people are scared to enroll in college and they're waiting to see, but we expect to be face to face. So um, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and fill out a SIC application that's free for seniors. It's www.sic.edu slash apply. That doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything to go ahead and get registered and enrolled. Uh, money doesn't have to change hands until much later. So um, don't be, don't wait till the last minute because a lot of these classes will fill up. We, we've got a cap on how many students can be in them. So um, once once that's full, it's full and you get put on a waiting list. So if you're if you're interested, contact me and we can begin um, the registration program. So, OK, everyone, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much again. Have a great day.